here's another vector. I'd like you to break this vector into components. And I notice that uh, you have to pay attention now to what our positive directions are. Make sure you're working in a way that's consistent with our positive directions. Well, we need to draw a right triangle that uses this overall vector as the hypotenuse. We want legs that are parallel or anti-parallel to the axes, and we want to include this angle if we can. Well, we can. And we want to draw arrows on the legs. The overall vector, can you see, was pointing up and to the left. You can see this arrow is pointing up and to the left, so our components are up and to the left. By the way, do you know what delta R stands for? Uh, some of you might not be far enough in your course to have learned this yet, but I think many of you are probably far enough to know that delta R is the symbol for displacement. If you haven't learned that yet, don't worry. I'm just telling you that delta R is the symbol for displacement. Um, so then we would need the x component of the displacement and the y component of the displacement. Now you might have thought, you might have thought that the x component would look like this. You might have thought that the x component would be delta R x. Uh, but it turns out that there's a different convention for displacement. So this is not the symbol we're going to use for the x displacement. Instead, we can use a simpler symbol. We can just use delta x. I'm going to erase this because this is wrong. This is not used. Even though this seems logical, this is not the correct symbol for the x component of the displacement. That's a wrong symbol, so I'm going to erase that now. Instead, the convention for displacement is that we just say delta x for the displacement. That's really different from uh, most of the other concepts we've seen. Um, for example, the x component of the acceleration is a sub x, and the x component of the velocity is v sub x. But the x component of the displacement is not delta r sub x, it's just delta x. So that's just a, a convention that we should get used to. Uh, some of you might be so early in your course that you haven't encountered this yet, but probably most of you have been exposed by now to the concept of displacement. So uh, now that I've told you that, you should be able to figure out what the y component of the displacement is. Well, the y component is delta y. It would not be delta r y. This seems logical, but that just turns out not to be the conventional way to show the y component of the displacement. Instead, we just call it delta y. That's certainly a similar symbol, isn't it? I'm going to label that this side is the hypotenuse, and we're going to focus on this angle. Why are we focusing on this angle? Because this is the angle we were given. If you wanted to, you could use this angle. Uh, it's pretty obvious this angle is 70 degrees. You could solve the problem using the 70 degrees, but that is not the way it's usually done. Usually we use the number that we were originally given. Well, I'd like to find the adjacent side. Why don't I label that this is the adjacent sign, and this is the opposite sign, and this is our hypotenuse. Uh, the adjacent side is the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. Ka, adjacent side comes from the cosine. Uh, the adjacent side here is delta x, but we got to put in the dot because trig functions always give you magnitudes, not signed components. Our hypotenuse here was 8, and cosine 20 we still have to deal with. Again, we're dealing with delta x with a dot. We're still trying to figure out the magnitude. 8 times the cosine of 20 is 7.5. Now, this is not a good final answer. For our final answer, we have to show what the displacement is, including the sine, without the dot. Well, uh, we've chosen right as our positive x direction, but delta x is to the left. Right is positive, but delta x is to the left in the negative direction. So the, uh, the x component of the displacement is negative 7.5. It's probably negative 7.5 meters, but as usual, we're not, we're not focusing on units right just now. Now we have to work out the opposite side using the hypotenuse. 
and the sine of 20. That'll be delta y. Our hypotenuse is 8 sine 20. Now, I wouldn't want to say just delta y, because that would indicate the sine component. Well, you're not going to get the sine component from a trig function. You're just going to get the magnitude. But these trig functions are about geometry and lengths, which always are positive. 8 times the sine of 20 is 2.7. The trig function doesn't give you the sine. Now we can figure out the sine on our own. Now delta y is pointing up, but the positive y direction is pointing down. Delta y is up, positive y direction is anti-parallel to that which is down. So delta y is negative. It might seem a little weird to say that up is negative. Of course, we usually think of up as positive. Uh, but if you choose down as your positive direction, then up really is negative. Uh, we just have to accept that. So be careful and make sure you're getting the correct signs. Remember that if you're getting these problems totally and perfectly correct, except that you are getting the signs wrong, then you're really totally blowing it. Um, it doesn't do you any good to get everything right if you're not getting the signs right. Um, you got to get everything right, including the signs. Especially because, remember, um, these problems are super easy. If we can't get the signs right on super easy problems, how are we going to get them right on complicated problems? So pay attention to everything, including the signs. One thing that we learned here is the convention for displacement. Uh, the overall displacement is called delta r, and then the x component is called delta x, and the y component is called delta y. Uh, it would seem like we should use this symbol for the x component and this symbol for the y component, but we don't. Even though these seem logical, these are not the symbols that are used. Instead, these are the symbols that are used. So now would be a good time to learn what the symbols are for the x and y components of displacement. Most other variables are much more straightforward. For example, how do you write the x component of the velocity? V sub x. And how do you write the y component of the velocity? V sub y. How do you write the x component of the force? F sub x. So usually we do use subscripts to indicate x and y components, but not for displacement. Let me point out one other thing that I don't know if you noticed. Um, normally on these types of problems, I've almost always been giving you an angle at the beginning of the overall vector. I've almost always been telling you, I think always I've been telling you the angle at the beginning of the vector. That is, I've been telling you this angle down here. Because notice this is the beginning of the overall vector. I did something a little unusual here, and I gave you the arrow at the head of the overall vector. So again, uh, in the past, I've always given you the angle at the tail of the overall vector. If you look at the previous problems, you'll see I always gave you the arrow at the tail of the overall vector. Whereas in this problem, I gave you the arrow, I, I gave you the angle at the head of the overall vector. Previously, I was giving you the angle at the tail of the overall vector, but now I'm giving you the angle at the head of the overall vector. Uh, what difference did that make? None. Didn't make any difference. Uh, it really doesn't matter whether you're given an angle at the tail of the overall vector or at the head. Uh, it really doesn't change the geometry much at all. So I just threw that in for a little um, variety. But it really shouldn't change your solving approach at all. It doesn't matter whether you're given the arrow at the head or at the tail of the overall vector. As long as you label which side is adjacent to the angle that you were given and which side is opposite to the angle that you were given, you should be able to use the techniques that we've talked about. It doesn't matter whether the, air, uh, the angle is at the head or the tail of the overall vector. All that matters is, com is correctly labeling who's adjacent to the angle that you're focusing on and who's opposite to the angle that you're focusing on. Of course, remember, if you really wanted to work with the angle at the tail, which is 70 here, you could. You could have solved this whole problem using the 70 degree angle. But people usually prefer to use the angle they were originally given. So we did that here as well.